Good morning. Welcome to yet another SJU. Very excited today. Um, we have got Dan Merle, Spencer Gilbert, Eric Goldman, me. I am Danielle. Didn't say um too many times in that sentence. We'll see how I do for the rest of the show. Radford. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a name you've got, a wrestling name there. <laughs> we'll see. It's a Khaleesi type name. <laughs> <laughs> First of her name, last of her ums. So we're going to talk some surprising Chris Rock's news. We're going to talk about the CW Netflix deal. We are going to get into some uh, John Wick stuff. Very exciting. So first, in news I don't think anyone saw coming, Chris Rock is going to be rebooting the Saw franchise movies. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so Chris Rock is going to be teaming with Lionsgate and Twisted Pictures. This is via Deadline on the next Saw movie. He has written a story, already mm -hmm. written it, uh, which is being adapted by Pete Goldfinger and Joss Stolberg. Goldfinger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rock will also executive produce. Right now, Lionsgate has dated the field for an October 23rd. 3rd, 2020 release. How are we feeling about this so far? What do you think, Eric? It's uh, it's one of those, first of all, when you see that, I saw someone on Twitter, I'm forgetting who, uh, who said something about Sunday's entertainment news feels like Mad Libs, and this was definitely <laughs> one of those, like, Chris Rock will reboot Saw. Sure. Uh, a strange combination, you just, because I guess Chris Rock, he talked about it, there's a quote from him about what a huge fan he's been of the franchise since the beginning. You just don't know that. You don't think about that as Chris Rock, number one Saw fan. Uh, but hey, if he's got a passion for it, I mean, I think Danny McBride did a really good job with Halloween last year. I agree. Uh, so it's just one of those funny things where you just don't really know until something like this happens who has this intense fandom. And clearly, this is an important franchise for Lionsgate. They tried a couple years ago to reboot it with Jigsaw, didn't really take off for them. This is the kind of thing that will get you a lot more attention on getting someone like Chris Rock involved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Daniel. I mean, Danny McBride did. They did do well, but mm -hmm. Halloween it was going back forty yes. years, yeah. back to lore that was established. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, where, I wonder, short of a radical, a radical reimagining. Mm -hmm. the, what corners of the Saw universe have we not explored? You can what, have uh, ten more secret apprentices. What? Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't think you need to get too bogged down in the the lore yeah. of Saw. Mm -hmm. I think that the opportunity here is to just have more interesting or funnier or sharper characters put in a saw like situation like that's what's missing is like good people no, I'm sorry all apologies to Carrie Elway I was about and, to say and the wow. screener, the guy who wrote the movie being, <laughs> being at the center of the first one but like this will definitely be a married couple or like a cop and another guy and like it's gonna be <laughs> hilarious well, if they play with the genre then great yeah sure. I just don't cause like Jigsaw was supposed to be the the reimagining yeah. of the yeah. saw and it was just another yeah. mediocre to bad saw sequel so it, it is desperately a of some kind of revitalization because it's not like they're going back to 1978, Laurie Strode, you know. It, it, no, like there have been almost as many Saw movies as there have been years between Saw movies. Uh, I want to see every year. Halloween for several yeah, years in a row. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see The Wood. Show me the wood the dog was made out of. That's the movie that yeah. we need to see. First wood. Got to see that. For us. Yeah, there's there's like a shrinking audience for Saw movies because it's so up its own butt in terms of lore. Um, uh, but this is a. I think there's always going to be an audience for like people in a hopeless situation, and you know the veils fall off, and we got to get real with each other. And I think that's where Chris Rock can step in. Yeah, I uh, slept with your something, and yeah, you, yes. you know, stole my mother's house, yeah. or whatever this might be. But, at, at a certain point, the Final Destination movie stopped working, and they just stopped making them because they're like, you know, I think we plumbed the depths of this. I'm sure in another five years they'll remake it. But yeah, but if Jerry Seinfeld while. is a big Final Destination <laughs> fan, <then laughs> that would be oh. amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, I did enjoy that the Saw movies were so crazy heavily serialized and so built upon each other until I didn't, right? It is that yeah. thing where it's like, oh, wow, well, you know, this is really, because we go every year, they're really playing with it like it's a TV show, but then it just got exhausting. Then it was like the 10 millionth, like I joked about, the 10 millionth Secret Apprentice. <laughs> it was just too much, too much of this. They were repeating themselves a ton. So it, I think it does take someone who can come in with a, a fresh take on it. You and know? it sounds like he's super into it. This is something that 
Lionsgate's motion picture group chairman, Joe Drake, said he said that Chris conceived the idea. It will be completely referential to the legacy of the material by reinvigorating the brand with his wit, creative vision and passion for this classic horror franchise. Chris Rock loves these jigsaw movies, yeah, apparently. I guess so. I hope it's like they're, when they were making Jaws 3, before it was Jaws 3D, it was mm-hmm. a parody. But it was going to be a parody movie called Jaws 3 uh, People Nothing. Yeah. And they were going <laughs> to take great. they were going to take That's the really franchise good. and make it like a goof on the Jaws franchise, which in retrospect I think couldn't have been worse than what they actually ended up doing. And I would love to see because we the Saw franchise has been taken seriously by itself and others for far too long. Like let's Let's it, let's have some fun with it. Why not? I hope that's mm-hmm. what they. I hope that that might be what they have in mind. I think it, as long as you, you keep it fun, but it doesn't veer into scary movie. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, R- yeah not like what <laughs> ah. You know, like, <laughs> not, yes, not scary movie territory, and not like top five where it's just like a Chris Rock stand up special, but he's walking down the sidewalk <laughs> instead of in front of an audience, um, which I loved. I love hitting that. Yeah, um, uh, I don't think it'll be completely just like discursive. Just shooting the shit in a in a trap room um <laughs> I'd watch that too. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm all about this. I think they should give this to Chris Rock. Uh, again, Seinfeld gets Final Destination. Maybe Andrew Dice Clay does The Leprechaun. Oh. I think. Hey, I'm the oh. Leprechaun. Oh. Hickory, dickory, dickory duck. I mean, he's got some cachet off Stars Born. Yeah, so exactly. sure. You know, why not? Let's trust him with another franchise. I, yeah, it seems like comedians are they, they're getting to explore. Everyone always talks about comedians' darker sides. We're fine, you guys. If you're worried about the comedians, in your life. They're in cars, they're getting coffee, they're <laughs> doing horror <laughs> franchises. We're, we're doing fine. <laughs> I like to drive and I like horror movies. Yeah, so yeah why not? Yeah, <laughs> see, Ryan, comedians, we're doing fine, right? I'm great. <laughs> Ryan's doing great. What horror franchise are you going to reboot? I like horror. Alright. <laughs> I guess my question is, because it's been so precious about the continuity, will this be the reboot that's completely starting over or will it be the reboot that's like, those movies happen but it does not have to have character connections it can just mm-hmm. be like, that's a thing that they might reference. This reminds me of so-and-so, but that's all your tenuous Yeah, connection. I think we'll get some winks and some nods. Do they pick it up after one or two, like the Halloween reboot Right, did, right. Like, yeah. Don't worry about four, five, six, seven. But the same I mean, guys are writing it who wrote Jigsaw, by the way. Mm-hmm. It was Goldfinger. He, uh, <laughs> he, he wrote Jigsaw. It's, it's not like they're yeah. like discarding the team. And they Jigsaw was crazy. such a just... I was because yeah. I liked the first Saw movie. Yeah. I liked it the first few, and yeah. then they just started getting so just, uh, repetitive. And the Jigsaw, I was actually kind of excited about because I'm like, oh, okay, they're gonna take it back to formula. They're gonna play around with it a little bit. It's like, no, it literally could have been called Saw Eight or Nine or whatever because yeah. it was just another movie. And I felt a bit cheated because I'm like, you just you just do this if you called it Saw Seven, no one would go see it. So you're like, this one's called Jigsaw, and, but it was the same thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was the same thing. Yeah. So he's done it so many times. Uh, you would think. That there would be a group of them that's, that would be self aware about exactly what was going on that yeah. could maybe have some fun or I yeah. don't know. Something I, I, different. I love Tobin Something Bell, different. but at a certain point you have to be like, okay, we cannot reveal any more backstory of this dude. No. Like, yeah. that no. has been told. So again, it's like, I, I kind of think the way of this movie, I bet they will do the thing that. That character existed, he did his thing, and now we can move on with something else that is influenced by that. Because Jigsaw already did, spoiler alert for Jigsaw, they already did the thing that they kind of ripped off from Final Destination, which was setting a sequel in the past, but not telling you that it's the past until the end. You're like, oh shit, it's the past. (laughs) It's like, they've done that, so take that rabbit out of the hat. Yeah. What's left? Hopefully and which was good. a trick that they yeah, already Chris Rock has left. Yeah. Chris Rock almost done that trick in the second one because it was he's yeah. watching the video and he thinks it's present, but it actually already happened. Yeah, so so. That's, the, that's the thing is like every one of the cool twists they did in like the first three, then they did like three more times. They yeah. just kept repeating that. What if it's just a Chris Rock set, but if one of his jokes bombs, he has to like cut off his foot? <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. now, that's ter- now that's terrifying as a comedian. That's going a place that's... that comedians do not want to go. <laughs> I'm on board. Keep them laughing or, or else you know, they must laugh or else there's a there's a saw in the stool. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Ooh, talk about your half-off tickets. Uh, Boom! Oh, oh, oh. Good. I'm so good at things. <laughs> Moving on to our next story. CW and the Netflix's deal has ended. 
Deadline is reporting that the three new CW uh, series, Batwoman, Nancy Drew, Riverdale spinoff, Katie Keene, are being shopped for streaming deals individually by their respective studios. So this is no longer going to be a package. So the previous giant syndication deal with Netflix was in 2011. Mm-hmm. It resigned in 2016. Mm-hmm. And they're reporting mm-hmm. it's not going to be resigned again when it expires. So under the previous deals, all CW shows would automatically go to Netflix, debuting their most recent seasons just eight days after the season finale aired. And we were talking earlier, in some mm-hmm. countries, the show would actually, it would be more like Hulu, where you would get to see it the next yeah. day on. So this is a huge loss for Netflix. Don't know, CW does have their own streaming platform that you can go on and you can catch things, mm-hmm. you know, the last five episodes or whatever right. it is. Dan did some research, which mm-hmm. I'm very interested in hearing about. Oh, yeah, well, because the way that this works is it, do, it, it doesn't mean, when, the, when they say they're not going to re-sign the deal, it doesn't mean the CW shows are going to disappear. Right. It just means that Netflix is going to have to bid for them like everyone else, mm-hmm. and it's also possible It's not that, one pool now. They have to do one at a time. Yes, yeah. and the CW... The W and CW right. is going to have its own, uh, so they'll be c- bidding against themselves, which would also be kind of odd. Yeah. But yeah, there, it's it's there's been a lot of studies released in the last couple of weeks about Netflix. One of them, done by I believe the Wall Street Journal, said that 72 percent of the watch time uh, uh, that they surveyed found that 72 percent of the watch time on Netflix was for their not was for non original mm. content, meaning their licensed stuff. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. that represents seventy two percent of what their viewers are watching. Uh, there was another one that the Hollywood Reporter did a survey where they put different scenarios in front of different groups of subscribers. Half of young subscribers, eighteen to twenty nine, said that they would cancel Netflix if they lost the office and friends. Both of those things are very likely to happen yeah. uh, within the next year or two, depending mm-hmm. on licensing deals expiring. 28% of the people in that survey said that they would unsubs- unsubscribe from Netflix if they lost the Marvel and Disney films, which they are most definitely going to <sighs> uh, when those deals run out. That's not to say that all those people are definitely going to do it, but there are also probably a healthy amount of particularly young subscribers that are with Netflix because all of those CW shows are there. And yeah. if someone else wins the rights to those, that's just another... I know everyone talks about the thing. Netflix, they're fine, they're fine, yeah. they're fine. They're, but they're losing content mm-hmm. left and right. Yeah. And maybe I'm just not plugged into the right networks, but like of their original stuff, I haven't seen a lot of it. Like I see little pops. A handful here. It's like a pop of, of, yeah. a pop of Sabrina here or yeah. there. But not like a Stranger Things type hit in the yeah. last few years where it's yeah. like something that is a sustained like network hallmark network th- not the hallmark network but well, they've, network they have, hallmark, they yeah. they've made all these enormous deals that haven't like borne fruit yet like Shonda Rhimes and like Ryan Murphy, yeah. Ryan Murphy Miller World and yeah. stuff like that like they're I'm sure they're they did that with an eye towards uh, these changes and, so. and losing all these shows. Yeah. yeah, I think like you mentioned, it's, so the shows are not going to just disappear. And in fact, the deals already in place stick around to the end of the show. So the Flash will still be on CW till the Flash ends, and then for a couple years after probably. But in the long term, you do wonder, yeah, what is the value? Even I am one of those people. If I fall behind on the CW show, I'm like, well, eight days later, it'll be after the finale. It's on yeah. Netflix. Mm-hmm. So people who really kind of count on it for that, and just you know, I think you know, it is interesting to think about viewers who more and more are just like, well, it'll all be on Netflix. They've counted on that. And how much will people stop maybe subscribing to Netflix in the long term as they realize, oh, that's that's not a thing anymore. I can't count on that. And a bunch of these shows might be now on this new Warner streaming service next year. Or, all well, these different outlets. Speaking of, so Deadline is saying that Batwoman is likely going to end up streaming on Warner Media's brand new streaming service next year, but not DC Universe. Right. So huh. Warner's got <laughs> so there's DC Universe, HBO Now, and this new service they're launching. Warner's going to try to do all at the same time. Yeah. <sighs> do we? <laughs> how many? We've got to start. We need one of those walls in the back with the strings so yes. we can start connecting all of these different streaming services to yeah. who they belong to. Yeah. I, I'm not an insider, but I think this thing is going to end up being a huge catastrophe. Mm-hmm. The Warner one? Mm-hmm. No, just all, all of, of this. <laughs> right. This is all. This everyone wants a bite of the apple. And there's only so many bites at the Apple to take. And somebody is going to get... But you do think Apple will do okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Apple, Apple Plus. Strangely, Apple, I don't think it's going to get... The, Apple's going to get the smallest bite of the Apple yeah. of all of them. Uh, I, I just think a lot of companies are going to lose a lot, a lot of money 
Mm-hmm. Because I'm sorry, the average consumer is not ready to pay for 20 different services to get. Unfortunately, and I've already seen it, they're just going to start stealing it again. Yeah. Like that was the whole thing with Netflix was it's 10 bucks a month and almost everything I want to see is there. So, yeah, I'll pay the Netflix. But now if everything's scattered against 15 different things, people are just going to mean, start stealing it again. You're not wrong, but I think that Netflix, again, being the most vulnerable, they're the only uh, uh, streaming service where this is it for them like that's their only revenue source right. they live mm-hmm. or die by subscribers mm-hmm. and uh, like apple doesn't matter amazon doesn't matter warner is like at&t or comcast or something like that at like, now yeah, yeah they're they're just there to sell you know uh, uh, broadband packages like uh, and so on and so forth like even disney is sort of mitigated by like disney plus it's like well if we can sell toys and get people to go to the theme park and stuff so mm-hmm. I don't think they all are even counting on them to make money. I think Disney long term is like this long has term. to be yeah. the future of our business. But the other ones are like they're a division within a division of a giant conglomerate. I like, true. I, I'm not saying it's going to bankrupt the company. I just think a lot of these are going to be massive write downs for yeah. these companies yeah. because they're going to lose them a lot of money. And unfortunately, not just corporate, they can lose a lot of jobs and a lot of people are going to. I just nobody. I don't know. It's it's all going to. Crap. Well, the, uh, <laughs> I would say okay. the, 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 this is going to be your. I'm not going to take it anymore. I don't know. <laughs> dead, dead, dead. Think of it. Look, this is yes. Long term, when they don't work and they collapse and people lose jobs, sure. But short term, like there's such a glut of spending and like such a hunger for like we need shows, we need stuff to put on here. They're making billions, not billions, they're making many, many, many hours of programming. And that is, those are people employed to write and act and direct and do all this stuff. And granted, they're stepping around guild rules and paying them peanuts. Yeah, but, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the glut in, in shows is not translating into more money for people. They're just cutting the episode order and paying them less. Plus, yeah. they can all compete with each other. Plus, the agencies are now working with the studios, so it doesn't even really matter. It's, it's so that's like, all being worked worked <laughs> out. But I'm just saying, in, it's not all doom and gloom because all these are new avenues. And as there's fewer and fewer movies released every year, and fewer and fewer, uh, the, the networks are buying less interesting shows and reboots and reality stuff. Like, these are all places where you can make original programming. You can make stuff for adults. You can make dramas or comedies and all these things that don't really fit at a movie theater anymore. So it's all going to crash and burn. But enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the ride. <laughs> I, I think you're going to see Warner in the next couple of years make a big decision because they can't sustain. They can't launch a big new streaming service and keep DC Universe and mm. keep HBO Now going. Mm-hmm. And I think that shows like everyone was really slow to get to this point. Now they realize the value is in Warner who have huge properties, but right now they're all split up. If you have one streaming service that has Game of Thrones and Harry Potter and Bugs Bunny cartoons DC. and the Batman movies yeah. yeah, mm-hmm. and everything, that is the value. And right now it's all Friends, yeah. Friend, friends. Yeah. Friends. Yeah. Like the they kept that huge library that was up for sale. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, so that's that's the huge thing down the line. So I, I just, I predict in the next couple of years, DC Universe will fold almost certain. I mean, I shouldn't say certain, but I think there's a good chance DC Universe will fold and just be absorbed into whatever this new Warner streaming service is and HBO now. It's just, it's just HBO can still exist as a cable channel for people who are still doing cable. But as far as the streaming, it just makes no sense if you're Warner's to, because they must know people are not going to buy all three, right? And yeah. like you said, people will just be like, I'll torrent yeah, that plus one. Plus CBS, plus uh, yeah. Disney, plus Netflix, plus Hulu. Plus, well, I getting... mean, well, you know that Disney's going to start bundling. packaging and bundling. They've yes. already said they are. <laughs> yes, They're yeah. theirs and Disney plus and ESPN plus. It's, it's, but it's, it's just, it's insanity. Too it's, many pluses. It's crazy. <laughs> Too many pluses. <laughs> it, is, it is crazy. Um, we were one of the first. Yes. <laughs> Trendsetters. Speaking of us and how, and how amazing and icons we are, once again, we are fandom. We are no longer uh, Screen Junkies News. We are fandom. Same people. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. We also have some really exciting new programming coming up that I'm really uh, happy to get to tell you guys about. So, Billy, if you want to come over, we're going to talk about one of our new shows. Oh, here comes I Billy from the steel you. chair. Billy. Oh, 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 oh. He's taking over. Uh, Hey, everybody. Uh, So yesterday we brought some concept art to our new show, Power Levels. Power Levels, if you didn't join us yesterday, this is really fun. Sometimes you just want to know who's the best 
X versus Y? Is it Superman? Is it Thor? Is it the Batmans? You get in these debates, but what if you actually created an American Gladiator type challenge and then you used real science to, to actually have a physicist figure out who would be the best? And that's what Power Levels is. We made crazy challenges. Oh, we're not going off the lore. We're getting raw, hard we're, data. We're, <laughs> we're turning that lore into raw, hard data. Yeah. And it's getting real. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, our first episode, our pilot episode, is coming out this weekend. Uh, we want to know, because Game of Thrones is, is wrapping up, who's the best dragon? And I actually brought uh, a little clip as we're locking the episode so you guys can uh, check it out. How hot do these dragons get? Roll that clip. (laughs) We pulled what we think are the three strongest dragons from the three most popular fantasy franchises. Drogon from Game of Thrones. The Hungarian Horntail from Harry Potter. And Smaug from the Hobbit movies. For their challenge, we'll make them sprint the distance from Hobbiton to Mount Doom, 1,030 miles as the dragon flies. Then use their breath to melt a wall of ice that's 30 feet thick, 700 feet high, and 300 miles long. The time it takes them to finish these tasks should give us a baseline for cross-franchise comparison. <laughs> Good time. So that, yeah, we uh, look. We're really excited about this. Uh, when when we uh, we brought it over to fandom, we had a lot of ideas we wanted to do. This was one that we really wanted to get started on. This is kind of our our first big fandom idea. You guys watching right now, you are kind of our screen junkies faithful. You're with us yeah. every day. The core. You are mm. our core. You are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're you're our peeps. You're our people. Hello, so this is important to us. We really hope that you guys check it out. It's going to drop on Saturday. Uh, tell your friends, share it. This is this is one we're really excited about, and one that uh, because now we're part of fandom, we actually were able to do. I don't think we would have been able to do this back in the day, but now we can do cool stuff like this. Yes, the, this this audience is our flaming sword Dothraki warriors. Except, <laughs> except we're not going to send the you void. into the void of an undead <laughs> army uh, of the Night King. Uh, <laughs> No comment. Uh, <laughs> they won't. I will. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to go finish actually locking this up, so it's good to go Saturday. Yeah, it turns I... out we got all the science uh, wrong, so no. we're going to go. Uh, Spencer uh, is lying. <laughs> no, we're just going to make sure all the all the renders are good, all the frames are right, so it's uh, it's it's at the best. You need to sleep, man. This kid is... This kid I is love this Spencer. <laughs> like, the filters disappearing, and uh, he's, right? he's just on the ID. This is our Vanguard. They should know that we are taking the time to get everything right getting... because we transcribed the science from a handwritten napkin and <laughs> the, we turned all the S's into fives and we're changing the fives back into S's. Everything so is when you 100%. see, it, you, you know it'll be correct because Billy's working on it. We are we are ready to go. We're just going to lock it up. We're doing a final sound pass right now to make sure it sounds all nice and good. And then Saturday, yeah, check it out because uh, uh, it's going to be fun and uh, we're looking forward to cranking out a bunch more of them. Oh, so yeah. I'm going to go uh, finish that up. You want to see Jigglypuff fight Bane? Oh my god, <laughs> Much. When is the Jigglypuff Bane episode? I don't know. We'll work on it. Finally. <laughs> All right. So yeah, check out Power Levels. We're super excited for it. Um, so next, obviously later tonight or later today or tonight, depending on where you're at, we're going to be doing movie fights. Check in for that. Mm-hmm. Right now, we sent our very own Kim Taylor Foster to sit down with uh, with Keanu Reeves and the director and the cast of John Wick Three. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and check that out. We've got a clip for you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Hello. I'm from Fandom, and I've gathered questions from our huge John Wick fan community. Okay, okay number one how does John Wick in the first movie compare to John Wick in Chapter 3? Parabellum. Well, I mean, we. We learn a little bit more about where John Wick is from, a little bit about his past and possible training. I think he's really consolidated what's for himself, how he feels about what's happening and why why he wants to live. If John Wick were to encounter Neo in, in The Matrix, who would win in a fight? Are we in The Matrix? Are we? Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't think they'd fight. Yeah, I don't think, I think they get no, a little, I mean, there's a connection there, I think. I don't yeah, know if they Yeah, they're not fighting. I think they'd have a bond and then they'd kind of team up. Yeah. They'd kick the s*** out of Agent Smith, though, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> What's the body count in John Wick 3? I don't know.
I don't want to know. Do you know? I know. Don't tell but him. But I won't tell him. Well, come no, on. No, no, you can't yeah, get it. Like, that's too easy. It's too easy. We're not going to hand them. it over to you. Okay, yeah. so I've got to go and count mm, them all myself. Count, count. Or something. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. Is it more than the previous two? There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen if John Wick had a prequel movie? <clears throat> the Impossible Task? I guess you could do chapter it. One. You still, the, I, we thought John Wick was more interesting. Like I'm sure he'd be an interesting character before he met his wife, Helen. I, I think we've seen those kind of movies and stories before. True. When you see the assassin Hence meets the, the girl. Visionary. But something to see afterwards, we never get to see. That's the whole John Wick's thing with time and, and consequence. What happens afterwards? What's the next day? Could we see more of that John Wick, perhaps in future films, in flashback, maybe? I don't know. I think if you watch all three together, I think by the end of Parabellum, you're seeing John Wick hit that mark of the boogeyman, the way he... Yeah. He gets a little edgy in the third oh act of Parable. Oh so, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, but that's oh what you would have seen in the prequel, I think. Oh, so. he's just lost. Yeah. He's just crazy. Mm, don't want to give away too much, but oh my. So that's okay. interesting. You've led me into the next question perfectly. Do you think he has any hope of finding true love and becoming John the family man again, or has his John Wick persona completely overridden that identity? I think right now that's not on the horizon. Which makes me want to cry. I feel yeah. bad for the guy. I think. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's bad. I mean, and he's got the love that uh, lived, but. That door's not open right now. He's not receptive to that, I feel. You've added loads of crazy new things for John Wick to deal with. Is there anything you wish you could have had him do, but just couldn't, and we'll have to save for the next one? Mm. We still have a list. We didn't use up all the ideas. <laughs> oh, gosh, what could we talk about with that? I don't, hmm. You have no idea what's coming. There's tons more car stuff. We kind of oh, pulled yeah. back on the cars. I know. <clears throat> yeah, we have a lot of car stuff we'd still like to try. Oh my God, the transfer. Oh, the yeah. transfers the tra and all that. Oh didn't. my gosh. Oh. We have a lot. Still, it's coming. The transfers? Anyway. <laughs> so far, you haven't disappointed. Yeah.